Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. If I had to play for Bill Belichick for 10 years, I'd probably start making rails disappear to Perna. It is true. Pat Safety, Patrick Chung, could be facing a suspension or even getting cut by New England due to a cocaine indictment. With Deron Harmon behind him, the Pats do have depth there, and they are lucky. They are lucky that this wasn't Devin or Jason McCourty who got busted. Like it or not, if one twin does drugs, both will test positive. That's how having shared DNA works. And that would have been a huge blow. No pun intended for the Pats. Today, I'll discuss that, dive into the Baker Mayfield and uh, Colin Cowherd trash-talking circle jerk, plus update you on the Dallas Cowboys, them giving defense contracts before offense, and them upping Zeke's offer. I'll probably have to mention Antonio Brown's name at some point, too. That's just the way NFL news is these days. Let's get sports. you can't tell, I'm in mid-season form. I have no time to shower or do my hair because the NFL news will not stop. And I do that for you. So if you could subscribe here for me, that would be great. This episode is sponsored by Vincero Watches, an elegantly designed luxury timepiece, which is also a great way to draw attention away from your skinny, hairy arms. Vincero offers six watch collections for men, four for women, with each having their own unique look and interchangeable straps for every watch. I keep working with Vincero because they design all of their watches in-house with the process to craft every product with great attention to detail. It's what makes these watches unique and why they provide the look of luxury, but without the hit to your wallet. Vincero inspects every watch by hand and that's probably a big reason they have over 16,000 five-star reviews on their website. Make sure you use my promo code GOODSPORTS or the discount link in the description when you buy your Vincero watch. Patrick Chung's cocaine indictment stems from a cocaine possession charge back on June 25th, stemming from having fun and doing cocaine, stemming from the stem of the coca leaf. The veteran safety is coming off a pretty solid season for the Patriots, playing in over a thousand snaps for the defense last year. These charges are felony charges and carry a possible three and a half to seven year prison sentence for cocaine. If Robert Kraft can avoid any serious punishment for soliciting sex from sex slaves, I'm sure the Patriots lawyers can make a pesky New England clam powder charge disappear like LeBron James at the start of the game. Two on the nose? Don't care. The lesson here, kids, is follow the boat rule when it comes to drugs. Don't buy a boat, just make friends with someone who already has one. Sure, I could just tell kids not to do drugs in the first place, but I want to be America's cool uncle. Listen, kids, you can do bath salts, but I have to take your car keys away so no one drives home. I'd rather you try and eat each other's arms off here than God knows where. Again, since Patrick Chung didn't physically assault or harm a woman or child, the NFL will probably give him the harshest punishment allowed. A four-game suspension where he has to serve as Antonio Brown's daily pedicurist, helmet preparer, and worst of all, friend who just listens to him. After the most recent episode of Hard Knocks performed better in Pittsburgh than any other city, including Oakland, Antonio Brown capitalized on the news with the perfect perfect trolling to his old fans with this tweet. My ex still thinks of me. Imagine how, how much more tolerable Antonio Brown would be if he sounded like Idris Elba. The Browns are now one of the most popular teams in the NFL, and everything Baker Mayfield or Odell Beckham Jr. says or does is being blow up by the media microscope, the mass communications monocle, the broadcast bifocals. This week, Baker Mayfield was crucified mostly by Colin Cowherd for his comments about Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Let me refresh you on the events. Baker Mayfield said in a GQ interview, I cannot believe the Giants took quarterback Daniel Jones. Blows my mind. Some people overthink it. Uh, that's where people go wrong. Uh, they forget you got to win. The media, again, especially Colin Cowherd, raced to criticize Baker without full context of the article. 
Did the Cleveland Browns not take a risk drafting a guy with a police video in college? A 5, 11 and a half, two-time walk-on? Then, out of nowhere, with particularly bad grammar, Odell Beckham Jr. said this about the Giants. This wasn't no business move. This was personal. They thought they'd send me here to die. Referring to Cleveland. Which could be true if Odell retires in Cleveland and spends the rest of his life there because he loves it so much. I hear it's lovely. Then Baker explained what he really meant about Daniel Jones, saying, You know, I reached out to Daniel because all that blew out of, you know, way out of hand, and I wanted him to know how I felt. And I've heard nothing but great things from Saquon and Sterling Shepard, uh, guys that, you know, have a lot of respect for him and that I, you know, respect their opinions. And so I uh, just wanted to clear the air with him. Uh, and, you know, it is what it is. I don't care about a lot of opinions, that, you know, if you like me or not, but that looked like my character was, you know, way out of line. And so that's the only reason I addressed it. Look, I sort of get both sides to this, okay? On one hand, I don't think there's any reason to slander a rookie quarterback. On the other hand, I like that Baker has the moxie to get people riled up. But on the other hand, Cowherd is right in that Baker and the Browns are one and five against playoff teams. But on the other hand, that's a huge leap forward compared to where they were before Baker. But on the other hand, there's no reason to say Daniel Jones sucks dick at quarterback. Paraphrasing. On the other other hand though, he's literally repeating what everyone else has already said about Daniel Jones, especially during the draft. But on the seventh hand, who the fuck does he think he is? And on the eighth hand, if the Giants really wanted to send Odell somewhere to die, they would have sent him to Chernobyl, where I grew all of these extra f***ing hands. <sighs> I don't give a shit which side you're on, okay? Baker Mayfield exercising his football right to talk trash and make the game more fun to follow, or the media exercising their right to criticize every damn thing a player says. What you need to appreciate here is that Colin Cowherd is the biggest hypocrite on earth. And I say that as someone who actually mostly agreed with his argument about Baker and winning quarterbacks coming out of college. Yes, Baker Mayfield won in college. That's because everybody wins at Oklahoma. Jason White on two bad knees won the Heisman. Josh Heupel won at Oklahoma. You know who didn't win in college? Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff and Matt Ryan. I did not go to business school. You know who else didn't go to business school? LeBron James, Tracy McGrady, Kobe Bryant. Baker Mayfield is six and seven as an NFL quarterback. He's a loser. By the way, he's one and five against playoff teams. He's a loser. Because there's no context to anything. I, okay, I, I said Colin Coward was a hypocrite. And that is him bitching about context while taking Baker Mayfield's comments out of context. Not to mention Daniel Jones was throwing to guys who don't get drafted by the CFL. But there's no context. It's just, I'm a winner, right, Baker? And everybody else is a loser. This was Colin earlier this year. Earlier this year crapping all over Daniel Jones and the idea of the Giants taking him at six. You're telling me Daniel Jones is the sixth best college football player in America. He's not the sixth best college football player in the ACC. He's not a top 15 player in the SEC. If you do not complete 60% minimum of your college throws, you will not make it big in the NFL. Also, if you want a real story, Colin Cowherd never washes his hands. So Sam Darnold a year ago. Some may say Cowherd accidentally rested his palm in wet ink. But I know, I know he was actually jerking off an octopus and forgot to wipe up. Classic Cowherd. He's sick. And I'm the only one not scared to say it. Octopus jerker. That's what you are, Colin. And I get, I get that Cowherd is on the radio for three to four hours every day and he's going to say stuff that is contradictory. That's the nature of having to say that many words all the time. This, this is the classic say one thing, do another. His hate-filled hard-on for Baker and Mayfield is weirder than the one I have for Tom Brady. The difference is I actually dislike Brady and I have never used him to try and boost my ratings. Except for all of the times that I did. Moving on, the Dallas Cowboys have extended linebacker Jalen Smith because Jerry Jones forgot who Ezekiel Elliott was. Best negotiator with Zeke? Who? Pollard. 
Yeah, Zeke who? <laughs> 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 He's got you. This is very serious, guys, and I don't appreciate everyone making fun of Jerry Jones, who is clearly showing the early signs of dementia. They just cut out the part where the reporters asked Jerry about every other player on the roster, and he also replied, Who? More clickbait from the media to make this story about Zeke's holdout. Probably all orchestrated by Colin Cowherd. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, can you tell us about Dak? Who? Jerry, Jerry, what about Amari Cooper? Who? Jerry, thoughts on Jason Witten? Oh yeah, Jason Witten, glad to have him back. I know Jason, he's a great, wholesome American cowboy. Jerry Jones says he earned the right to joke about Ezekiel Elliott. Look, I've earned the right with Zeke to joke, period. I've earned that. But let me be real clear about it. I've earned that right to joke. And I, I agree with Jerry here, which means Zeke is fucked. If I say I agree with Jerry Jones or any NFL owner about anything, you know I am right because I always choose the player side, especially running backs who get ripped off more than any other position group in the league. Their contracts are unfair, their shelf life is short, and the owners exploit that year after year. And Zeke has definitely outplayed the value of his deal. However, Zeke has also been an absolute headache for the Cowboys off the field because Zeke gets himself in more trouble than Louis C.K. at a Bath and Body Works. And still, according to Ed Werder, Dallas has offered Zeke a contract that would pay him more than Lev Bell but less than Todd Gurley, which is exactly what I think Zeke's value is. So Jerry Jones giving us a little wink saying I've put up with Zeke's titty flashing, concert bouncer arguing domestic dispute debacling ass for several years now seems fair. For a guy who's so old school, and by that I just mean he's really old, but still understands the new school philosophy of not paying running backs is impressive. Of course, part of that philosophy is not drafting a running back with the fourth overall pick, but as someone who co-founded the Socratic Method, Jones is at least evolving in his philosophy. And if it wasn't Zeke, it would have been Paxton Lynch in that draft. Imagine how beautiful that would have been for the Dallas Cowboys. But let me be real clear about it. I've earned that right to joke. He's a loser. And that is all your NFL news. Please subscribe here to YouTube, my channel on YouTube. It's called That's Good Sports. It is here on YouTube. There's a red button that says subscribe. If you click that with your thumb or your mouth or whatever, it really helps me. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Aperna. Make sure you follow at Wilkie6 on Twitter too. He helps me write.